Sadly, our homestead population is dropping by two today. We're saying goodbye to the ducks. It's time for an introspective chat. There's been a topic on my mind that I wanted to share with you guys for the last couple weeks, but I wasn't really sure if the timing of it or if I had gathered my thoughts enough on it yet to where I could articulate it properly. But I received a comment from a viewer about this very topic, so that's motivated me to now have this discussion with you guys. Viewer N. Cootie writes, It would be interesting to hear a little about how you guys are preparing your son for the slaughtering of the sheep. You all seem understandably fond of them, and I imagine that for your son, the idea of the slaughter and saying goodbye, not having them around, etc., is probably pretty abstract. I've received this question a few times from relatives and close friends that are kind of concerned about how we're dealing with it, especially with little buddy. Um, so that kind of prompted me to have a discussion with him a few weeks back. So he sat down and I started explaining to him how we would be getting meat from the lambs in a few months. Little Buddy's understanding of that was we would be harvesting meat from the lambs like we get eggs from a chicken. It's just something that they give us and then they go about their merry way and eat more hay and everything's fine. So the conversation developed into where our food comes from. I explained how the animals have to die in order to give us their meat. All of the steak we eat, burgers, fish, chicken, all of it came from animals that had to give their lives so we could eat. And then I explained, in order for us to get the meat from the lambs, we're gonna have to kill the lambs. And little buddy, very unemotionally, very logically, matter-of-factly, just flatly said, well daddy, let's just eat steak and chicken and not kill the lambs. I thought that was a pretty mature response. I really wasn't expecting that. It led me to believe that he's probably a little more emotionally equipped to deal with this than I had thought. And as the viewer has pointed out, little buddy and I have gotten really attached to the lambs. When they first got here, I really didn't think it would be an issue because they were uh, definitely standoffish. They were real flighty and skittish around us. But a lot's changed since then. It started with Black Butt. This is Black Butt. He was named that at the ranch where he was born by the breeder or farmhands because these black spots right here. Black Butt quickly established himself as the leader of this flock. And as the leader, he made the first effort with me. He would come by to see what I was doing, if I were working in the area. He was always checking me out and interested. He and I bonded first. And slowly over the next couple weeks, the other guys started warming up. We've definitely bonded with them. They each have their own distinct personalities. I really love raising them. They, they are really great. They're great lambs. This will be undoubtedly very difficult. I know we have to do this though, and I keep telling myself that. Just like with processing the chickens, it was really important for me as a homesteader to take that step into processing our own chickens like that. I didn't want to do it, but I, I had to. I was compelled to. And it's really the same thing with the lambs. Sometimes when it's kind of weighing on my mind, I'll mention that, Ashley, about how I'm not looking forward to November 2nd at all. And she'll remark, Well, maybe we can just keep them. We really can't though. They are four intact rams. And in the next couple of months, they're not gonna be, they're gonna start reaching sexual maturity and they're definitely gonna be more aggressive. They're already demonstrating signs uh, due to their comfort level of us with wanting to play with us and we can't have that because obviously they could really hurt us or little buddy And that behavior is just going to continue. It's going to get worse The response then is Perhaps we can get some use for them Having the little guy reproduce would just not be responsible livestock management 53 on the other hand he is a really nice looking Katahdin um, I would definitely consider keeping him as breeding stock. But if we were to keep one, or more than one of them, we're back to the challenge of overwintering. 
It's something that my mentor strongly advised us against our first season. Do not overwinter, do not get breeding stock, do not do lambing in the spring, do not do any of that. Stick to the plan. We don't have the infrastructure in place to overwinter. We haven't talked about it again with little buddy since, since a few weeks ago when he made that comment. Uh, we do need to talk to him about it again to make sure he really understands what's going to happen. As for me personally, as I said before, I'm really dreading it, but this is something that I have to do. I have to take responsibility for this. We're going to put up lamb meat this winter, and in the spring we're seriously considering getting our breeding stock. Once we get breeding stock, you know, we can get attached to the ewes. They're going to be around a long time. It's almost two months away and I haven't thought about it much. I'm intentionally not getting attached to them. I don't pet them and play with them. I respect them tremendously and want them to be happy, but it'll be really hard. So I don't know how it's going to feel. We've never been through it. We'll find out. I'd really love to hear from you guys about this. Those of you uh, with children that have gone through this or are going through it now, leave some comments below about your experience with your children. Let me know how you've prepared them or how you are preparing them for the livestock slaughter. My friends Rob and Molly from Amiable Acres where I did the chicken processing, uh, they have uh, small children and they're all very accustomed to the livestock slaughter. It's just everyday life for them. They perfectly accept it um, Our background's a little different. We've been city slickers most of our lives and little buddy uh, Grown up in the suburbs have just has just never really had to deal with this So it's definitely a new experience for us. So again, uh, leave some comments below. I'd like to hear from you guys We are getting ready to take the ducks back to their original home at my father-in-law and his wife's uh, homestead the ducks don't seem very happy. They haven't laid any eggs in a couple weeks, and from what we know, they really like to be around bigger flocks. And we want them to be happy, uh, and, and they just don't seem happy. So we're going to take them back to their family and hope they get to lay some more eggs again very, very soon. Now for a lot of homesteaders, another issue is the ducks and chickens consuming resources and not producing anything. Uh, we would like for the ducks to be producing something for all the, the feed that they're eating. And every day, of course, we also fill up water just for them. And uh, they're not really social, you know, they're not companion animals. So we think it's time for them to be where they're happy, where they will produce eggs and be part of their flock again. Maybe in the future we'll get some more, but we have 12 pullets that we're waiting to get later this fall. And we want to make sure we have enough room for them. Also, right now we're really just starting off. So we are actually trying to be really focused and the ducks are kind of not helping with that. So in terms of productivity, we think we'll stick with chickens for now and maybe next summer we will get some more ducks. So what's the plan for extrication here? The plan is to trap them in the tractor and then you're going to catch them and put them into the carrier. And then we'll put them in the bed of the truck and take them back to your dad's house. All right. seem happier already.
took the ducks back and they seemed really happy, but I feel kind of sad. I really liked the ducks, but they weren't happy and we weren't building a solution or a situation for them that long term was sustainable, so we want and, them to go and back. And they're happy again. Yes, and they are happy again and that is what we want. Happy ducks make happy duck eggs. 